This is Living Power with Dan Hurst. I don't know why he intended to watch that way and let us have something like this, but he did. He has a whole different time frame. And I need to learn God's leading and God's timing. The psalmist has discovered this very important element about just waiting and listening and being focused on God. In Psalm 5, verse 3, In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, Lord, you hear my voice. Did you notice that? In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I lay my request before you and wait in expectation. Psalm 27, 14, Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. Psalm 33, 20, We wait in hope. Hope is confident anticipation. We wait in hope for the Lord, for He is our help and shield. Psalm 130, verse 5, I wait for the Lord. My soul waits, and in His word I put my confident anticipation, my hope. The waiting on God is one of the most difficult things we do. But the kind of waiting that God wants us to do is not wasted time. It's not. Waiting on God means that we are attentive and focused on Him. Listening, focused, and most of all, ready to do His will. Think about this. There is nowhere in the Bible that we're told to be busy for God. Not there. Nowhere in the Bible you're told to get busy for God. So many Christians think that we have to be busy for God, we're, that we have to be doing something, that somehow that makes us more spiritual and acceptable to God. Feel that we just have to be busy, 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 busy. Interestingly, the word busy isn't even used favorably in the Bible. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, yeah. There's that. There's that saying. You know, the idle mind is the devil's workshop, and that's, by the way, not in the Bible either. Here's a very simple life-changing truth. You know what I'm saying? Here's a very simple life-changing truth. God wants to use you. He has a ministry for you, a plan that He wants to accomplish through you. However, He doesn't just say, "Here's your assignment. Go do it." He doesn't handle it that way. But he does use the elements of your life to accomplish what he wants to accomplish. And one of those things is the crisis in your life. One of those things is the difficulty that you've been going through in your life. Now listen to this. God doesn't define you by your crisis. He defines you by what, by what he can do through you. God doesn't define you by your crisis. He defines you by what he can do through you. God doesn't define you by your crisis. He defines you by what He can accomplish through you. Philippians 3, 14 and 15 says, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. All of us who are mature should take such a view of things. And if on some point you think differently, God will make it clear to you. God has a goal for your life. And he has taken the elements of your life, the good and even the things that have gone wrong. And he can incorporate those. Did he want those things to go wrong in your life? No, he didn't. But he can take what went wrong in your life, whether it's by your fault or by somebody else's fault. He can take that somehow or other and he can create something out of that that will make a difference in somebody else's life. Looking for a Bible study that's focused on the practical application of the Bible? Check out our website at theopenclass.com.